Hi friends, uh, I'm Faraz and uh, the purpose of today's session uh, is to explain you guys uh, some pr process angle to the uh, sales order flow uh, in the sales and distribution module. So as an SAP consultant, you would know how to create a sales order, uh, delivery, uh, billing, etc. Okay, but it is also very important for you guys to understand uh, why we do this way and what is what are the process benefits and also uh, it's it's it will help you to see the full picture of uh, the process in the order to cash cycle okay and for any project that you're working on uh, you would have it already in 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 your uh, project somewhere stored in the documents go have a look otherwise it will be if you're starting a greenfield implementation it's very important that you also understand uh with the business uh, where you're implementing that what is the process flow li like uh what's the current flow and how it will be uh, in the future uh, so when you create your sales cycle you just do your sales bit but uh, it will be so helpful to understand what are the different um, departments that are integrated into the entire process and how you will be coordinating with them so process flow is very important and that's why i'm gonna teach you this is something which you will not uh, be trained in when you're learning a module or anything it is an additional knowledge that will help you when you're joining any project okay so that's why i thought that to explain you guys how it works what are the process flow like now another uh, there are different kinds of flow diagrams that you can create one is a swim lane and then there's a process flow but in this case in this one which i'm going to show you uh it's more of uh, covering the different areas and under which area watch what element uh belongs so if you're creating a sales order it will be under sales if there is an inventory it should be there so the process flow will also tell you wh which area uh it belongs to okay so let us see and understand and also i use lucid app which is very useful so if you're new in creating process flows and all that and you are you you like doing new things so try uh take it try lucid app uh, because Visio Flow, Visio, Microsoft Visio uh, is slightly uh, complicated to use and you would not like it initially. So this is very, very helpful. So you can just take a subscription and there are free trials also. So you can uh, uh, explore those options. Okay, so let's start the order to cash uh, process flow and how it will be impacting the, uh, your businesses. So imagine you are a manufacturing company, you are um uh, requested to send a delivery to your customers and there is an order management there is a delivery process and all of that and how it begins and where it ends so you'll have to see we will also see the uh, finance updates impacts on the accounting etc in the entire flow okay so so first of all what are the different departments that could potentially be involved in a sales order to cash flow you have customer who will who will place order you have business planning which is more of demand planning so in, in retail industry in, in food and beverages industry you ha you do a lot of forecasting and all that because it's mostly based on make to stock and uh, you have constant uh, need of uh, fulfillment of the orders to the customers so you do your forecasting their seasonal forecast for example uh in the summer time there'll be more demand on the drinks etc etc so you do all of that so you expect what orders will be coming so you are always uh, available with stock then there's transportation uh which we have to manage uh through the delivery shipment etc and then sales management where uh, the sales and distribution guys will be ensuring that most of the things are covered and we'll see what details we can get into then you have inventory and warehousing which is also linked to your transportation if there's a stock then what are the things that gets updated and um, uh, and how the transportation is linked if there's any procurement involved i think uh, normally in an order to cash if uh, if you're manufacturing and then selling uh, then there is very little procurement area uh, but we'll see if there's any and then um, in some cases you do have to procure uh, material to fulfill the stock uh, because you're manufacturing um, uh, a finished product and in the manufacturing process you have a lot of parts to either procure uh, from the external vendor internal uh, so there's some element of procurement also involved when you are when you receive an order and then there's finance which uh, which means that 
how the finance gets updated in the overall process. Okay, so let's uh, let's maybe uh, start. And I have created just a, a um, initial uh, document, and then what we are going to do is we will uh, go along and start creating the uh, flow along with you, so you will know what what are the things that we have to do. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, so uh, let's start with the customer. So you have a customer, okay? And uh, we have to fulfill the order to that customer. So what are the things that gets involved in the customer? So before uh, customer, uh, let's see, we also have something in the, uh, sorry. So we have something in the demand planning also. So we do demand planning. Demand planning is, uh, as I said, it's about the forecasting and other things. So you do that. You know what the um, forecast or the products that might be needed by the customer. Uh, now, first thing that gets started. So we start from here. Okay. So there is a. Uh, so imagine, think uh, as a big company. Okay. So if you are a big company, you always have contracts. When you have contracts, you negotiate uh, the contract with the customer. So let's say uh, the contract is negotiated. Negotiate the contract. And then you negotiate the contract. Then, uh, then there is after the negotiation, the uh, contract is finally signed. So you say in the sales order, you have contract agreement. Okay, so you have a contract agreement, and this contract agreement could be um, in yearly contract, and it can happen uh, uh, once a year. So you don't have to do this every year uh, for all the sales order that is going to uh, be sent to them uh, on a monthly basis in the yearly contract that's mentioned. Okay. Um, Okay, so so now uh, your contract has been agreed, and now you have to uh, fulfill the order. So now uh, think that it's a big customer, and there could be uh, there could be different ways of uh, sending order uh, to you as a company, uh, and it could be either EDI email call. So they said that EDI process is uh, electronic data interchange where where the orders are automatically received into your system. So you create, you get the order, you then after getting the order, you create your sales order, okay? So sales order, as you guys know, or would, uh, uh, if you don't know, you would know when you learn SAP, so transaction code via 01, so you have created your sales order through this, okay? I hope uh, uh, so far it makes sense. And then you, Okay, you have a sales order, contract agreement. Okay, and then um, till now, uh, you just created the sales order. Now, what are the things that are, that happen at the time of the sales order creation? Okay, so you've created your sales order. Uh, let's take an example. So when you create a sales order, a couple of other things happen. So let's say, um, if I make a note uh, at the sales order creation, let's say here, it's quite big, isn't it? So, so here, um, And the sales order creation you have uh, for example um, price and uh, Partner determination um, date of um, the in quote terms, payment terms, 
etc. Okay. So these are the things that will happen when you create your sales order. Now sales order is then validated. So you after this sales order. Okay. And then once sales order is the sales order validation means that you have to make sure all your incompletion log, everything is complete, your sales order is complete. Uh, there is nothing missing your material your customer everything is all uh, there already so your validation happens okay so then once you enter your sales order uh, everything is in there then uh, system automatically triggers the availability okay so your stock will be checked so availability check um, uh, checks whether you already have a stock or not if not then what is the procedure in your company whether you're doing back order processing forward processing uh, scheduling and then uh, the stock will be replenished and then you can be you can give a date to the customer and all of that happens uh, when you enter the material depending upon your MRP settings etc and then next thing that happens is uh, I keep drawing the arrow so you know that what are the things that are getting involved and uh, yeah, so here and then next is uh, one second okay so next is uh, your uh, credit check so if you have a customer um, that uh, has a bad credit history and you don't want to deliver, then there'll be delivery blocks and all of that. So all this is happening, yeah? All this is happening in your sales um, and automatically because behind that process, you have said all of that, okay? So we have to understand at what stage are these checks happening, okay? And then after that, your auto processing is complete, okay? So uh, let's say, you say your order processing is complete okay copy complete okay so now what happens after that um once your order processing is complete then uh, depending upon whether you're using your uh, advanced planning optimization or not uh, there will be some there will be some uh, distribution resource planning that will happen. So if I say here, um, <clears throat> 10, maybe zero. So you can say distribution planning will happen here. And then you can bring arrow there. Okay. Now, suppose uh, in this case, for example, the uh, so this is a scenario where you have stock and everything is okay, then your order processing is complete. So in, in cases where you uh, don't have the <clears throat> uh, stock, so suppose you say um, quantity, okay, so quantity is not confirmed, then what you do? So if quantity is not confirmed, so suppose let's say confirmed, then there will be <coughs> uh, back order processing, okay? Because in your sales order, when you enter sales order, it says confirmed quantity. If not, then the back order processing will happen, okay? And then, then it will try to run a circle to make sure uh, that uh, your order uh, is complete and a date has been provided next is uh, when you when your uh, let's uh, copy from here it will be simple once your order and everything is complete and then you start your delivery creation so now delivery creation yeah, process will happen uh, in the sales management uh, but the remaining steps will be uh, let's see where it falls under okay so now you have created your delivery 
and now you see inventory in warehousing so so your stocks are lying at a warehouse or at a plant somewhere and you have to make sure uh, that the delivery uh, happens from there so uh, you create your uh, here you create your outbound delivery order okay is your vl uh, one n and if it's a bad job then there will be some bad job uh, creating the deliveries okay so you do this here okay so now uh, see i have to make sure in which department it is this is also important because uh, when you're implementing and finally um, uh, involved in business then you have to tell them which user uh, will be involved in which department will be involved in which process okay and also one more thing when you are doing your back order processing you have to uh, make sure that the unrestricted stock is available in the end as i've told you okay so if i copy this here and say um, back order processing uh, uh, brings the unrestricted stock available okay uh, we can only send unrestricted stock to the customer because um, if it's uh, if it's a stock that is uh, under quality or blocked or for blocked for another customer, then you can't send that to uh, your customer. Okay. Uh, so I hope uh, so far it makes sense. Let's move on. So your delivery has been creation. I think we will need more space to I will slightly stretch the flow because it's going long and we do this see it's so simple the um, you said app that you can understand and create your flow and it uh, I give some tasks your brain for the process okay so many new learners who are in SAP uh, they are not sure why uh, we, well, why SAP uh, does all of this, what's the benefit, why the consultants are paid so high, because you see you are designing a process and the big organizations will be using this process uh, to improve their uh, efficiency. I mean, you may not be doing this in your company, but it's good if you do it, it does it for your own practice to understand, okay? And then you will know the gaps in their process. Okay, so now depending upon uh, how the system is structured uh, there, if you have a shipment process, then what you do is uh, you create a shipment uh, process. So shipment, uh, which means that you, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to make sure that the process flow covers the entire end cycle for till billing. So you are able to deliver the stock and receive the payment as well. Okay. So you've done the shipment. Now here, if you see, I've created one as transportation also because I knew that transportation will also be involved and they will do the transportation management, etc. Okay. So your delivery is here and then your shipment is here. One second. And uh, so here, if I copy this and here we say, transport so transport is actually physical delivery to the customer to the transport management and uh, it happens here and then transport will assign or transport uh, fare forwarder so let's say assigned so the, you know these things when you do it and without thinking about this then you will lose so many steps now this is the granular level that you are doing every step making sure that the full flow is in there okay and then you actually execute uh, the transportation Okay. Yeah. 
okay so you've you've done see you've done delivery sales management under sales management then you have to make sure that uh, the stock is leaving from your side we have to create delivery and ensuring the stock and everything is updated delivery document is created then there is a transport team which can be an external company uh, who will in parallel be coordinating to uh, make sure that they have the stock to deliver to the customer okay and then uh, i think uh, let's say for example you have assigned a transport and transport will also uh, be linked in the shipment because when you create your shipment uh, you have all the things included in that uh, shipment etc and here also uh, you will be doing you will be let's let's change this color to uh, this because uh, all the one which are in red means this is part of sales others are other departments so you can uh, later on see what is in your area what's in so normally in sales and distribution everything uh, here will be part of sales and distribution co consultant and uh, this is part of sales okay so once you've done that then you have to uh, do your uh, pick back so you can do pick back of stock okay and then if it's uh, wm then your uh, it should be linked with your wm or ewm and then here parallel it happens loading uh, on the truck okay hope this makes sense so far and then once your um, uh, loading is done <clears throat> uh, finally remember you have to uh, in the system in the delivery document you have to do post goods issue which means the stocks have gone out okay so shipment update and then let's say you do your post goods issue in the now when you do your post goods issue uh, there are two areas where it's linked to inventory gets updated because your stock gets reduced from your side and gets updated so you do for example pgi post good issue here this also you can make it gray okay and then uh, you load the truck and the pgi happens after your pick pack let's say okay and then once your pgi is done then uh, i think we will need more space again so here uh, once your pgi is done then your stock i'll tell you where it gets updated okay uh, the financial entries i mean Okay, you see how the flow is coming out neat yeah so you do this uh, PGI and then uh, from PGI the way is finance so here is finance so let's bring this here and your PGI most of you would already know your cogs happen okay cogs is cost of goods sold okay so cogs get updated this is a financial entry okay so you've touched finance also now right so and then um, what are the things so loading yeah so well, let's say here uh, you have another thing which is called um, truck checkout maybe you can call it the truck is being dispatched or you can say uh, this uh, truck uh, moving out, okay. check out or whatever. All right, so now um, there's one more thing uh, which is about shipment cost and shipment settlement. So once your 
um, PGI is done, <clears throat> then you have to settle your uh, shipment also. Okay, so if we say uh, shipment and then it's also linked here, so you say shipment cost settlement just the external render or internal whatever you have to make sure that the shipment cost is also uh, paid to the forwarding agent right and then there is another thing so once your pgi is done then uh, you create your sales invoice and for sales invoice it's also here uh, in sales order oh sorry create this and then here then you have your sales invoice okay, so you create this uh it could be your decode vf01 okay. and when your um, when your sales invoice is created, then there is another uh, accounting entry that gets updated, which is your revenue. So if I click here, then here it's okay, updated in the yeah. So here it was COGS, but now it's revenue because um, at this time you haven't created the invoice you've just delivered the goods but the the goods have gone out and uh, your inventory is reduced your know, cogs get updated cost of goods sold okay now your revenue is done and then <clears throat> here what you normally do is uh, you customer uh, because you are you know uh, this is your customer so you also have to create an invoicing document so uh, Ideally, it would be nice to put some in uh, document kind thing, but uh, let's see if you have anything or let's put just normal text for now. Uh, sales invoice. Send to the customer. Okay. And here uh, it is. This, this gets sent to him. This gets updated here. And then finally, uh, once the payment is made, then your revenue management, again, there is another entry because you have sent the invoice, <clears throat> but no payment hasn't been made yet here. So you wait for the final step and uh, say receivables. I think this, uh, if you slightly do this, so you see this flow that you have created, you need to understand within your organization um, which department uh, are involved. In some cases, you may not have the forecast, so you can remove this uh, flow and uh, uh, just remove this. this. And then in some cases uh, where uh, you don't have any procurement involved, like in our case, we haven't done any procurement uh, as such, but there may be some situation uh, where you have some, uh, for example, on, if you're doing your uh, shipment cost settlement, uh, then there could be a situation uh, where you have to create a PO uh, and get paid and, and pay the uh, forwarding agents and stuff like that. But uh, uh, but it's it's fine, and I think um, this should give you uh, an idea why you need um, a flow to be created in your uh, in in your uh, project that you're working on. Any questions? Please let me know. Feel free to comment. And uh, you see, all except I think procurement, we have covered all the different areas that is involved in the order to cash uh, process flow. Okay. So let's see if you get to see a full diagram here. So you see here full as this. 
Okay. Nice. Speak to you guys soon then. Cheers. Bye.